I recently got stronger and lighter at the same time. Hey guys, welcome back to Smart Simple Fit. Today I'm going to be telling you a story about how I recently got stronger and lighter at the same time. Now, a lot of what you'll hear here on YouTube fitness is that it's extremely difficult or even somewhat, some would say impossible to lose weight and get stronger at the same time. Uh, some would say it's you know near impossible or pointless to try and gain muscle or strength while eating at calorie maintenance. Uh, you hear people talk about main gaining and I definitely have my opinions on those topics. And I, I think that the healthiest perspective that I can present for you guys to understand how weight loss and weight training are related together and, and how each one affects it. You know, how to maximize each one. Is it a continuum? Is it black and white? I want you guys to think about this. Whenever you focus on one variable in a system that is comprised of many variables, okay, other variables get tweaked as a result, right? You can't maximize everything all the time. You can't maximize your weight loss and your strength gain and your muscle gain and a whole bunch of other things and your cardio all at once. But it is true, you can improve your cardio to a degree. You can gain some strength, gain some size, and actually lose weight at the same time. But the, the degree to which you do each of those things has to be manipulated in order for that outcome to be possible. So what I'm gonna share with you guys today is why I did my cut, what exactly took place. And in addition to that, I'm gonna give you five strategies that I used to actually make this successful, how to, how to get such good weight loss. So uh, first of all, the, the reasoning why I did this was I wanted to very simply put, make room for another bulk. So I've been doing bulking and cutting for uh, the better part of one and a half to two years now. Before that, I just kind of listened to my body or ate around maintenance in order to try and gain muscle. And that worked pretty well, but as I became more of like an intermediate lifter, more towards advanced, I wouldn't even necessarily call myself an advanced lifter, it became clear that I was gonna need some extra calories in order to help gain muscle and push heavy weights, whether that's for squatting or for bench press, for deadlifting, or even just doing things like biceps curls. Guys, you need to have some energy in your body, especially if you're on the leaner side, like I am, I'm not exactly 10 or even 12% body fat. I'm probably, even after my cut, somewhere around 14, 16%. Um, so I'm not the most shredded guy on the planet, but you know, if you're, if you're sub 20% body fat, yeah, calories are going to go a long way to help you make the gains that you want. So uh, my perspective was I want to do, I wanted to do like a four or five week cut where I could just lose, you know, eight to 10 pounds, roughly speaking, and just basically make room for another bulk. I think one of the best reasons why you should cut if you're a uh, you know, natural guy, an enjoyer of bulk and cutting, you just like lifting weights, putting it down. If you do a nice slow bulk and a cut, well, you can actually cut pretty rapidly, get it done with in four, five, six weeks. You don't have to spend two to three months cutting and try and lose 15, 20, 25 pounds, right? You can just get it done quickly and then decide when you want to do the next cut based on how you feel, what body weight you get to. You don't have to actually have a perfectly strict system and I'd recommend that you don't. I, I, you know, you need to have a plan, roughly speaking, of what you're going to do, but when you get there, sometimes part of your plan goes out the window. So what actually happened when I did this cut? Now, the result was this. Uh, so on September 2nd, I weighed in at 178.5 pounds. This wasn't my heaviest, but this was, you know, sort of like a heaviest average for me. And, you know, I was getting into the high 170s, low 180s. And so I decided, you know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily the happiest with how I feel and look. Uh, the How I looked was probably more of an impact on how I felt. And I thought, I'm gonna make room for more bulking over the winter and then do another cut in the spring. So I wanna get it over with. I don't wanna suffer through calorie deficit longer than I need to. I wanna get back to training and feeling strong. So that's why I wanted to do it rapidly. And uh, today on October 1st, I weighed in at 171.0. Now the thumbnail I went with for this video says seven pounds, 25 days, that's true. I was 171.5 on September 27th. Uh, and I didn't think I was going to lose any more weight than that. I wasn't really trying the last couple days, but I actually successfully did, you know, go down another half pound if you want to count it, right? Uh, so you could say 7.5 pounds in 30 days or 7 pounds in 25 days. Either way, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm definitely happy with what I achieved. So the idea was just to pull a plug whenever I was happy with what I, what I felt or getting sick of uh, dieting, which yeah, it's a little bit of both. So either way, 
that's uh, that, that's what happened. That was my goal, you know, mission success. Could I have gone another week dieting, lost another pound or two? Yeah, absolutely. Do I think it was necessary? No, I don't think it'll make a big difference in the long run. So that's what took place. Now, five strategies that I use to make this doable. Here's here's what I did. Okay, first things first, tracking. Okay, weigh yourself every day and write it down. I created a separate folder on my phone where I could go in and say, you know, this date through this date, and then put every little day, September 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, et cetera. And I would write the number first thing in the morning. Now, when you're weighing yourself, you should do it under constant conditions. The way that I weigh myself is I wake up first thing in the morning. I'm always in my underwear when I weigh myself. Okay, so wear consistent amounts of clothing. Use the washroom, okay? Don't have your coffee, don't shower yet. Showering, especially if it's hot, it's gonna cause you to sweat out a little bit of water, maybe have some water in your hair, so you're not sure exactly how that plays into it. And do it before breakfast. That way, under those constant conditions, you can rule out things like, uh, you know, your, your body's waste products and the food and the shower and the coffee, et cetera. So that way you have a good idea of your, your changes day to day being mostly associated with fat. Although, of course, there's still nuance like water, weight, carbs, et cetera how much food you even ate total quantity that day. You know, we don't always eat consistently. So lots of tracking made a big difference. That's strategy number one. Number two is that I continued to weight train hard. Now that might sound counterintuitive, right? A lot of perhaps older bodybuilding advice was when you're cutting, your body can't handle the heavy weights. You gotta go light, you know, do sets of 20, 30 reps, things like that. Uh, you, you gotta change it up. You gotta go for a pump instead of uh, doing heavy weight training. No, I kept doing heavy sets five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 reps, you know, very similar to how I would normally train. Uh, at most, I might have decreased a little bit of volume, like I'm talking one to two sets per week per some movements. Maybe on overhead press, I'm doing a tiny bit less volume and on deadlifts, I'm not going quite as quite as heavy, but that's more because I'm also overcoming a, a back injury. Uh, but otherwise, no, I kept picking up heavy things, putting them down. And let me give you a quick little science lesson without being a nerd. You know, I don't like relying on scientific training very much uh, because it's a buzzword full of jargon and and uh, delusions and uh, misconceptions and deceptions and so on. But, you know, scientifically, we know that when you're doing resistance training while trying to lose weight, it actually helps your body redirect the weight loss more so from fat than muscle. Some would even say, that if you're not doing resistance training while losing weight, that up to a quarter of the weight that you're going to lose is going to come from muscle. And that is definitely not what I you know, wanted to achieve. I want to keep as much muscle as possible and basically just lose fat. So the fact that I did resistance training hard, heavy, lots of sets that are close to failure, similar volume to how I was training before the cut, that really made the difference in my opinion in the fact that I got stronger throughout the month and I'm going to go out on a limb and say almost all the weight that I lost was fat. So that's excellent. So that was strategy number two, keep lifting hard and heavy. Strategy number three is this. I included some form of you know fasting or let's say delaying my meals, right? I would go out of my way to push pack my breakfast as long as possible. There were even some days where I wouldn't eat till two or three in the afternoon. And was it rough? Maybe a little bit. There was a couple hours uh, between like you know, eight or nine in the morning when I wake up and, and that time where I had my first meal where I thought, wow, this is tough. You know, that hunger's really punched me in the face, but I just get up, do my normal stuff, uh, send my emails, do whatever, train a client or two, my normal morning routine, go for a walk, drink some water, shower. And you know what, if you get busy with stuff, okay, it, it's going to help you uh, ignore a little bit of hunger. Do I think you have to starve yourself to lose weight? No, absolutely not. But the amount of weight that I lost is pretty aggressive. And one of the ways that I achieved aggressive weight loss is ignoring hunger. Okay. So with fasting, you're going to have to ignore a little bit of your body's hunger. Okay. Don't be a baby about it. Just don't be a baby. You're going to be a little bit hungry while losing weight. Even if you have lots of artificial sweeteners and fiber and protein, you're going to be a little bit more hungry than normal. So suck it up, buttercup. But yeah, delaying my breakfast and manipulating also the time that I eat my dinner. I, you know, I didn't have a strict window, fasting window, let's say, but if I could decrease three meals to two, I took those opportunities uh, probably four or five days a week at least. And I definitely delayed my breakfast by multiple hours compared to how I normally eat. So that's the third strategy. The fourth is that I went on lots and lots of walks. 
Uh, I like jogging and running a little bit, but I'm not exactly a marathon runner or a sprinter or anything like that. And if I'm going to do some form of activity or cardio to help me lose weight, well, the most sustainable, manageable, you know, least mentally taxing as well, and to my mind, is just walking. And here's the great part, guys. I did not actually count my steps, but I did look at the time spent walking. And my goal was to spend multiple hours a day walking. Many days a week, I achieved that. Some days I'd only get half hour or an hour in of walking. Uh, but there were definitely some days where I probably got two hours plus walking. So if you have the time, you know, if you have the freedom in your day to go for great big walks, 45 minute, hour, hour and a half long walks, do it. I suggest you do it. You could even break it up into 10, 20 minute sections or sometimes where I'd have a client in the afternoon and then like an hour break and then another client. And I would get out of my house, go for a walk, come back after like 20, 25 minutes, uh, prepare for the next client and then boom, right there. So one of the benefits of being an online personal trainer is you have the freedom to do things like that. So guys, the point is just go for lots of walks. How many steps per day did I get? I don't know. I didn't count them and I didn't have a number in mind. I just knew that compared to what I was doing before, I needed to walk more in order to help lose weight. So I did more and I got aggressive about it. Enough so that people who know me are like, man, you're going for a lot of walks. I was like, yeah, I'm trying to lose weight and it worked. So definitely lots of walking is a great strategy. Okay. And strategy number five is increasing protein. Very, very simply put, uh, you know, I, I guess you could say I manipulated my macros overall. Like if I had to look at carbs, I would say I probably only just decreased bread products a little bit. Things like croissants, bagels, uh, muffins, um, you know, things like that, scones, biscuits, things that I would regularly have uh, throughout the week, sometimes every day, one of those things. And if you decrease those, you can easily slash like three, four, 500 calories from your day of eating. So it's not that I really reduced carbs. I just reduce certain portions of things, including those bread products. But the biggest thing more so, and this is what I said, you know, protein, I actually supplemented protein. I had protein shakes almost every day, at least four or five days a week. And some weeks, probably seven days a week. I'd have protein shakes, just little Kirkland ones. You can pick these up at Costco's, uh, you know, nothing fancy, right? The best part about this is it was pre-made. So I didn't have to actually put anything in a shaker and mix it all up. It was just ready to go. Those have 30 grams of protein. And to me, those really helped me stay full. If you look at the, the nutrient label as well, uh, those things are highly nutritious. And maybe that bothers people because it's like, you know, processed and it's all just like pumped full of stuff. You know what? It helped me stay full and, and satisfied and lose weight. So uh, supplementing protein is an excellent strategy for losing weight. And guess what, guys? I don't normally take protein supplements when I'm just trying to build muscle and I'm bulking. It's actually when I'm losing weight that I go to my way to consistently have protein shakes. Otherwise, I would only have protein shake like once or twice, maybe three times a week. And even then, I do it more so for enjoyment and satiation than I do for like, oh, I got to get, you know, one gram per pound of body weight. I've never consumed one gram per pound body weight in my life, and it's never held me back whatsoever. So those are my five strategies. I hope those helped you guys. And one more thing just to point out, not only did I not track how many steps per day I was getting, I did not track my calories whatsoever. I just know what a normal day of eating looks like for me. When I look at the plate, I know how I normally eat. Uh, when I listen to my hunger signals in my body, I know what I want to put on that plate. And when I restrict myself to, you know, less smaller portions here and maybe a little extra fruit or a little extra vegetables for that day, you know, it's little decisions like that that add up in the long run. So that's it. Very minimal tracking. The thing that I tracked the most was my workouts and my weigh-ins not my calories and not my steps. And you know what? I lost 7.5 pounds in 30 days, seven pounds in 25 days, and I got stronger. I added at least 10 pounds to my front squat. Okay, 206 for a triple versus 216 for a triple. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide if the exertion looks the same. But either way, I'm gonna be testing my strength in about a week. I'm gonna be trying to go for a 10 or 11 pound PR compared to what I did in early September. So. I'll share with you guys a video. Hopefully that goes well, but for most of that time I was cutting. So in order to hit that PR, hey, we'll see. I just wanted to give you these uh, tips to help you lose weight and help you with your cuts and to remind you that your body is capable of dynamic things, right? It, there's multiple systems. They, they're they intertwined. They work together. They're redundant, homeostatic mechanisms. So it's not that you're just turning on off switches like, oh, time to bulk and build muscle, time to cut and lose muscle. There's actually a spectrum, a continuum 
of different things that happen. And, and you know, hard, heavy weight training helps you lose less muscle and in fact, gain muscle while in a diet. I was only dieting for four weeks. So guess what guys, if I had done this for 12 to 16 weeks, I probably would have struggled to get stronger and put on muscle, but it was the window of time that I spent doing it that really made it sustainable, hopefully in the long run. So I hope you guys found that educational. I'll have more to talk about bulking and cutting in future videos. I just wanted to quick, quickly share that story with you. So thanks so much for joining me. Leave me a comment, like, subscribe, and let me know about your bulking and cutting experiences too. All right, take care.